Al Lipscomb, uh, I met him that day at the, uh, at the rally in, in, in 72. Uh, he was speaking. Um, uh, uh, you know, everybody met you know, Al Lipscomb. Uh, he had the, the South Dallas Information Center. Uh, so, uh, you know, I was introduced to him. And, uh, and, uh, but I was one of the many young people who were introduced to him. So, I, you know, I was just one out of a, a million uh, that he had met. You know, all of us knew about the, uh, the lawsuit. And when I say all of us, many of us uh, who were in the community, we knew about the lawsuit that was filed. But uh, I was not that actually involved in um, uh, uh, electoral politics. I mean, you know, I was voting, but I was not. Uh, I was uh, working in various different programs, and and we were down at the uh, El Centro Community College. Uh, that's where many of us attended, and uh, we used to have speakers come in, and and, and uh, we invited Al Lipscomb in one day, and he came in and he spoke. And then uh, I got to know him uh, more than a little more. But I really got to know Mr. Lipscomb, and it was uh, in 1980 when Ms. Higgins was elected to the city council. Uh, when Elsa Faye Higgins was elected, once they had resolved that, that lawsuit. And uh, I just got to know him. And uh, in fact, uh, Ms. Ragsdale, Diane Ragsdale, was working at the uh, VA at that time as a nurse, and she, was on, uh, she had a car. And we would all uh, ride together, and Mr. Lipscomb would always talk about the lawsuit, what happened, what happened, and, and just he was, you know, frustrated about certain things, and but he would always just just talk, and, and uh, we would all just uh, all listen, always listen to him. Now, uh, uh, in 1978, go back up a minute. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Jesse Jones, but he was with the uh, organization called. Uh, uh, Professional uh, Voters League, and uh, he also he was an instructor at, at Bishop College, which is Paul Quinn now. Uh, that was a, a, a program that was being held at, at El Centro in '78, and they were talking about the Bakke decision. I don't know if you're familiar with the Bakke on affirmative action, and um, uh, there were some, some people up on the on the panel, and Dr. Jones came to and pulled a lot of our students over to the side and said, "When he finishes, when we finish this, uh, we I want to talk to you about something." And so after it was over, uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Stanley Alexander from the uh, voter uh, education uh, uh, group in, in Atlanta, and he was, he was here. And uh, Dr. Jones asked, said he needed help. With, so with the, with a, he said he stated a project that uh, he was here on. And we said, okay. And after uh, the lecture, uh, the debate they were having, we all piled in a different cause and went over to the Martin Luther King Jr. Center and uh, the, per the people he was, he was meeting was J.B. Jackson Jr., Al Lipscomb, and all the rest of the group that was uh, inv involved in that. And uh, that was my first uh, 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 contact as far as uh, on the uh, filing a lawsuit, so for the education, for the rights uh, 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 lawsuit. But when we went in, uh, you know, they were all just, you know, we were the college people, so they were just uh, uh, showing us how to do different things and talking about the, uh, the lawsuit. But uh, the person, Mr. Alexander from Atlanta, was a demographer. You know, we didn't have computers at that time where you could just pull all of that stuff up. And what he would do, he, he would, uh, we would drive around and just show him different places, different streets, how to find different streets in the community. And once we finished, we would go back to the hotel where he was staying, and he would have all these maps on the floor, and he was down there drawing the lines, you know, and we were just holding the lines and, uh, of the newspaper, I mean, the maps, and, and, uh, and he would, uh, he was uh, just drawing the districts up and looking at different things. But when he left, he uh, told us that, uh, at, he said, at different times, uh, I'm going to come here and I'm, I'm, I'll need some help. And would, do anyone, does, would, would any of you like to volunteer? I volunteered and, and two others. And so when he would come to uh, Dallas, we would drive him around so he could do that. But I remember one day I was riding with him. And he asked me, he said, do you know uh, uh, J.B. Jackson Jr. and Al Lipscomb? I said, sure, I do. He said, well, they're going to change Dallas. Dallas will never be the same when they're finished. And, uh, you know, that's uh, uh, what the was won. Uh, the lines were drawn. And uh, Ms. Hague, Elsa Faye Heck is won in a, in a close race. And um, how I re actually really got involved with Mr. Lipscomb and Mr. Jackson was that there was another person by the name of Charles, uh, who's Charles there? Anyway, he's out of East St. Louis, and he was uh, married to Ernie McMillan. Are you familiar with Ernie McMillan? Okay, we, he was married to uh, Ernie's uh, sister. 
And so we would always, we had the same uh, birthday, January 10th, so we were always talking and working on different, different issues. But he asked me one day, he said, man, come and go to this meeting with me. And I said, what meeting? He said, uh, over at the uh, uh, Martin Luther King Center, you know, uh, it's the Faye's meeting. I said, I don't know if I want to go over there. But I went over there and I sat down and was listening to them, and I never left until uh, they got off the council. But it was very informative, and they were just uh, showing us uh, the process at the city, uh, city hall, uh, how it operated, how it functioned, and, and, you know, those of us who were serious stayed in there. And, but uh, I got to know Mr. Lipscomb then. We, like I said, we used to ride together all the time. In 1982, uh, 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 there was uh, a number of police shootings in, in, in Dallas. Uh, December 1982, um, I was at a meeting, at one of Ms. Higgins' meetings, we were talking about that, uh, just police shootings and, and different things. Because at, at her meetings, it was like going to school, you know. Uh, they brought the agenda out. Uh, would have uh, various people from the city manager's office there, you know, telling us how to, how to process. So we were all there. And uh, I noticed Roy, because, you know, he's taller than everybody, but he was uh, talking about a, a, a police shooting that he was working, he was there for, you know. And uh, at that time, we didn't talk that much, you know. But uh, I just noticed him at the city council when he'd come to speak all the time. And um, one day, uh, I was speaking on the issue of uh, South Africa, uh, apartheid in South Africa, and Ms. Lipman said, you know, uh, uh, they, Roy had a street name, you know, they, they called him Snake. He said, you know, uh, uh, Snake just continued to watch you. I said, who is that? He said, you know that tall brother that's always coming up behind you when you're speaking. You know, and I, I, that's how I, I initially met Roy. And then... Um, uh, uh, well, we went, one place we used to meet is uh, at the Adolphus Hotel because everybody used to go to the Adolphus Hotel because they had um, uh, the buffet there. You know, people all over the city came to to the, to the Adolphus, and we were, you know, all of, all the activists were there because it was after leaving City Hall we go eat. But uh, Diane Ragsdale and Mr. Lipscomb were there, and uh, Diane was telling me she said Marvin stated to me said Marvin, you know. Al and I are going to be on the city council, and uh, you know we need to uh, have someone that's going to uh, organize and, and, and build uh, the speakers to, to come to speak. Because Mr. Mit Mr. Lipscomb had told us one day, we were all sitting in, in, in the city, city, hall, city council meeting when he was elected. He came down and he said, look, I'm going to tell you all something. Now, I'm elected to the city council now. You know. I can't be in both places. I'm not going to be up, up on, uh, at the council, and then when something comes up, I'm going to have to run down from the council to come down here to, uh, to speak and do both things. So, you know, you're going to have to organize this, you know, yourself. And uh, Mr. Lipscomb had really been training me uh, and, and uh, different things, you know, uh, and I'm not, I wasn't really aware of it, but he had me doing everything, you know. And uh, just for a side thing, I know late, years later, uh, I asked him, I said, you saw me coming, didn't you? He said, I sure did. He said, I didn't think I was going to ever find anybody to replace me. And uh, then we began to work on the uh, South African issue. And then we uh, began to work on the uh, just various, various issues. But uh, one thing we had in common is that uh, both of us were uh, in, in, in the Army at the same time. He was in the uh, north, southern part of Germany, and I was in the northern part. I didn't know him. But at the same time, you know, he was a basketball player, you know, and I was involved in football. And uh, so we just kind of hit it off and got to talking and, and you know, different things and, and, and found out we knew a whole lot of different, uh, of the same people. So that's, that's how I, I, I met Roy. Now, now, as I tell people, we, we, we didn't agree on everything, but, you know, for, for 25 or, uh, or more years, you know, we, uh, we were together just on the uh, everyday, uh, we, were, we were together all the time. And, uh, and, and as far as 141 is concerned, it couldn't have happened in a, uh, 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 two, two, historically, uh, two people came together and decided to, uh, to, to do different things and meet Because Roy was, uh, uh, because of his life experiences, uh, he was able to, he got along with people very well. And plus his, his spiritual uh, thing that he had, uh, I couldn't have had a better person, you know, and I, and I miss him a lot. 
What you have to understand about, about uh, uh, the, uh, the lawsuit was the fact that uh, the whole community was involved in it. The activist community was uh, totally involved in it, and that's what made it uh, successful because of the fact the people were uh, in involved. And, uh, and we, didn't, we had not even decided if it was going to be 14-1 or 13-1 or 12-1, but, but, but uh, the, in the activist community, and uh, those who were not uh, uh, everyday actors, like we were, people were involved in it and, and, and getting involved in doing different things at, at, at City Hall. You know, you had, I remember you had uh, a lady by the name of Bernice Washington, Jay Washington, she's a poet in Dallas. She came down and uh, she and another uh, person named Johnny Hughes, who was involved in the first lawsuit, uh, they were speaking, Bernice was uh, speaking, and, um, and, and, and Ms. Strauss was the mayor at that time. And, and we were blessed to have Ms. Strauss as mayor, as the mayor. But um, they were telling her her time was up. She said, I'm not moving. And the past council was packed. I mean, it was packed to the hilt. And she said, I'm not moving. I'm not going to move today. And Johnny Hughes was in a wheelchair. She came up in a wheelchair and said, I'm not moving either. So everybody had to stand up. Could nobody, would nobody leave? And uh, so that made a, a, a big uh, impact on, 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 the, on the council. Uh, they could tell it was, it, was, uh, it was serious. But there were very, uh, before we even got to court, there were a lot of people who were trying to settle it, uh, settle the lawsuit. But uh, one thing I always tell people is that, yes, there were a lot of people uh, involved, and people did different things, but there were only two plaintiffs. You know? And the judge, uh, if you're in court, the judge is going to listen to the plaintiffs. Of, you know, uh, uh, what do what do you want? What do you want to accept? And so, uh, once we got into the court, I mean, after taking the testimony from the council members, and because Judge, judge Buckmeyer was very familiar with it because of the fact he was an activist judge, and he was uh, also uh, part of the uh, first lawsuit, Lipscomb versus uh, the uh, the uh, city of city of Dallas. So. Uh, in fact, we he had a we had a uh, ally to a certain degree because of, you know uh, he uh, he kept a lot of things going a lot of things straight. But uh, but but this is what I, I do want to uh, just uh, say this. Before that lawsuit was filed, before the lawsuit was filed, is that there was a group called Ten One. I got some of their brochures at the, at, at the house. I, I, I'll, I'll give you one of them. But uh, the purpose of the Ten One group is that it was uh, organized by a Democratic consultant by the name of Bruce Barrett. And what they were going to do is that they were going to do a, a signature drive and get enough uh, uh, signatures to put the issue of, uh, of single-member districts on the, on the, on the ballot. Uh, and in and, and, uh, March of 19, well, in March of 1960, well, let me say this, in 1980, um, 1986, I was over to the, uh, Diane and I, uh, we were over to the uh, Adolphus Hotel just talking to Edith. She said, Marvin, I want to ask you something. I want to know if you want to be a, uh, one of the people who are plaintiffs in a uh, voting rights lawsuit. I said, Diane, I'm, I'm uh, on the whole thing about uh, South Africa. I'm working on uh, uh, bringing the uh, Conyers in, John Conyers in for the, uh, for the uh, uh, police review. Uh, congressional uh, 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 issue. You know, John Conyers came in and he had a committee, congressional committee on police abuse or whatever. So I'm working on bringing that in. And I'm tired, can't you find somebody else? And she said, if I could find somebody else, Marvin, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Uh, nobody wants to do it. And I said, I don't know, I'm not going to do it. I can, I'm not, I'm not going to do it now. So in 1987, I was involved in the mayor's race. And uh, after the mayor's race, is, uh, and I had asked her at the meeting of the Adolphus, who would the attorneys be? And she told me Mike Daniels and uh, Betsy Julian, whom I knew them from working uh, in 1971 and 72 at uh, legal service, Dallas Legal Services. They, was, they were just gotten out of law school then. But, uh, and they had been involved in, in, the, in the first lawsuit. So he, she told me that Mike Daniels, uh, uh, they were going to be in the, uh, the, the attorneys. So I had another friend of mine by the name of Mary Dews, uh, we'd gone to El Centro together and, and just community, just various things in the community. And she was the, uh, one of the, the plaintiffs, uh, the people who initiated the whole housing lawsuit, which also was in Judge Buckmeyer's court. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, all, the, all these things happened. So after the, the, the council race uh, in 1987, 
around March of 1988, I went to see Mike Daniel, and I told him that uh, uh, I had talked to Diane, and Diane had, had made, said, you know, talked about the lawsuit, and I said, I'm interested in being a plaintiff. He said, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm sure. He said, why don't you think about it for a month or two, and then come back to me. So, in, and also in March, the 10-1 group that I was telling you about, they were having a big meeting at the King Center, and I attended that meeting, and that's when they were talking about uh, going, uh, doing the petition drive, and which, you know, I, and then once they got enough signatures, then they would negotiate with the Citizens Council, you know, in which uh, uh, many of us didn't think it was going, that was going to make any difference because they were not going to budge. I'll give you how they came out with a million, million, million signatures. So after that meeting, that's when I attended, uh, I, I went back to Mike, and I told him, I said, I want to be a plaintiff in the lawsuit. And then he asked me, would I... Uh, uh, go out and find uh, other people to uh, to be involved in a lawsuit, which I told him, I said, yeah, I'll do that. He said, we don't need that many because there were eight before, and then we ended up with eight different opinions on how we're going to do different things, you know, confusion. And uh, so uh, that's when I went out and, and started asking people to, uh, if they wanted to be a plaintiff. Uh, I had uh, talked to a person by the name of Ruth Benson. We were, going, we were taking classes at UT Dallas together. And uh, she said, yes, she'll be a, 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 a plaintiff. And one of the reasons I asked her also because she was part of Diane's group, okay? And I was, I'm a person like, if someone came to me and asked me to do it, I'm going to make sure that they're uh, actively involved in it also, you know, so. Um, so Ruth went down, but Ruth uh, was having problems. She had some teenage daughters, and she worked at the post office, and she came and she told me, she said, Marvin, I want to do this, but my, but my uh, children are going to come first, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to, I won't be able to uh, continue anymore. So I just said, thank you for coming this far. And I called other people, and then I said, let me call Roy. And <laughs> so I called Roy, and I said, say, man, um, um, you want, to get, you want to be involved in a lawsuit? He said, what kind of lawsuit? I said, the voting rights lawsuit. He said, uh, I said, the same one that uh, you know, uh, Lipscomb filed in, 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 in 71. He said, I don't know. Uh, let me think about it. I said, well, you know, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I'll, call you, I'll call you back. And so I called him back, and he said, uh, count me in. Okay. And he came down, and we went over to uh, meet, uh, I introduced him to Mike and Betsy, and, uh, you know, he went, down and, and, and filed a lawsuit. And um, ironically, <clears throat> what happened is that uh, uh, we got Judge Bugmeyer. When he went in, he, he, we, we hit bu with Judge Bugmeyer. But then there were those also who were, uh, and I am, I'm, I'm discussing my book, but yeah, there were those also who were saying, Marvin, you know, this should be your lawsuit because of the fact that you were the one who went over there. And I said, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. And Mary Dews had come by that night and told me, she said, Marvin, whatever you do, we need to stay in Judge Bugmeyer's court. You know, uh, and, 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 and two other things that happened that was important historically is that when I used to ride around with Mr. Lipscomb and he was always talking about the lawsuit, he was talking about how, how the uh, establishment, as we call it at that time, would use the divide and conquer. You know, how to play, uh, play the plaintiff's office against each other and caused confusion. He said, he always, I always remember him saying that once you get the plaintiffs of fighting each other about who's this and who's that, then you're going to have a whole lot of, diff a whole lot of problems. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, that's, that's what was good about Mike and, and, and Betsy, uh, not wanting to have eight or nine plaintiffs like they had before, okay? And I remember that. And I also remembered a, a meeting uh, that uh, we had over to the uh, over, over St. Luke, St. Luke Church. Uh, it was an education issue. And I was riding with Mr. Jackson. It was right before they decided to get off the council and run for county commissioner. And we were just uh, in the meeting. After, uh, after the meeting, I was riding with him. He said, what are you mad about? So I uh, began to tell him. He said, Marvin, I'm going to tell you something. You need to learn how to uh, function and operate in, in organizations, you know. Uh, he said, you know your position, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, well, you just find out what everybody wants in, 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 in on the committee or, or whatever and give them what they want. You know, if they won't uh, be on TV, let them be on TV. He said, you don't, you don't like to be on the media, do you? I said, no. He said, well, put them on TV. Uh, whatever they want to do, if they want all the women, uh, or however they want to do it, you let them have it. But when it comes down to making decisions, 
Uh, you make the decision because of the fact that you've given everybody what they wanted, and what they wanted was not going to take us where we needed to go. So I, I remember those. I remember those things, and I was not going to get into any arguments about that. I just told them, no, I'm not going. I was not going to do it, and we're going to leave it uh, like it was. You know. I mean, I mean, I've been in court before, but uh, uh, not 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 to that degree. But you know, it was it was okay. Uh, and Judge Buckmeyer, I mean, several times, David, uh, what was his name? He was a city attorney, uh, assistant city attorney, David, Lebrecht, Lebrecht, I think that was his name. And he was, uh, he was on us, you know. And Judge Buckmeyer would, uh, would warn him, say, and I remember him pointing his finger and saying, I told you I'm not going to have this in my court, you know. So it made them back off. But uh, we had a good judge. We had an uh, activist judge whom we uh, called the Committee of One. You know, because the final decision came down there. You know. But it, it was good. But uh, I have some of the testimony from some of the council members that, uh, at, at that time. It was a grassroots movement. You know, uh, as uh, you stated, is that uh, Roy and I were the plaintiffs. But uh, it was organized and structured to where it was uh, grassroots-led. And, and what you can do is that if you... If, uh, at some time, if you look at the press conference that we had uh, when we first, uh, uh, when we went before the community to say that we had filed a lawsuit, uh, the people who were there, well, we were all activists. And uh, that's the way it was designed, and, and, and that's what, uh, what happened is activists came together, and, and you know, people were coming up every day. There was nothing to know. I, I, I was not, people were planning things on, on their own and, and, and doing it. And, well, you know, 14-1, um, it was the last um, grassroots movement uh, of the 20th century in Dallas, uh, Texas, by uh, an oppressed class of people uh, using the Voting Rights Act for economic and uh, political democracy. It was the last, last big thing in, in, in uh, Dallas that happened in the, uh, in the uh, 20th, 20th century. Um, I, you know, and I look at 14 when it's, it's still been, it's still young. The first election was held in 1991. I mean, look, this, you know, it's, what, 25, 26, 27 years ago. Uh, but I think that uh, um, we, we, I don't think we've, uh, uh, to the point where we can really judge it. Uh, because of the, you know, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't really, really judge it. But our whole thing about uh, uh, as we went along and we uh, discussing and, and the various groups that was in, uh, it was not just about, and, and a lot of people uh, uh, take this and, and take it and, and, and look at it like it was about getting more blacks on the city council and more browns on the city council, whatever. But it was about building uh, in the southern part of the city uh, an organized political structure or organized group of people uh, that were going to be able to come together and to uh, do things for the people uh, within the city. And at the same time, you know, we, uh, we built uh, allies in the northern part of the city. And that, uh, that's what 14-1 to me really was about, is, is, is building that structure to where we could serve the needs of the people in the city. But see, but my whole thing is this, is that the, the leadership can come from white people. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, as long as that uh, the, uh, he or she or, or whatever is talking about doing something for the for the, uh, and, and the masses of people, it doesn't make any difference because there are some. Uh, well, I'm gonna get off of that. But there are some other people on on that. I realize it's, uh, uh, it's not going to do anything. But but see, I came up with an organization of this, is that uh, we call for all power to the people. That was the Black Panther part. We call for all power to the people. And it just doesn't mean, when all power to the people, that slogan doesn't just mean that it's for, uh, for just for uh, black people, even though we're in the Black Panther Party. It's for all oppressed people in this country, brown people, uh, 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 white people who, who are not uh, uh, a part of the system, which, 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 proved, which we proved it many times and proved it in, in court, is that uh, under the, uh, their large system, uh, if you were not part of the Citizens Council, if you were not chosen by the Citizens Council, you were not going to be elected, you know, especially with uh, women. 
It's, it's kind of difficult because all of it just came together, just like a recipe at a cake or something. I mean, you, you know, everything came together. And uh, we had the judge that we... Uh, that so it was just a better timing this second time around. Oh, yeah. That, uh, and, 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 and what happened all because of what happened the first time around, because of the fact that uh, uh, people, you know, who were actually involved uh, learned things from, from that. Uh, I'm sure Mike and Betsy did because they were involved in, in, the, uh, in the first lawsuit. They might not have been the lead attorneys, but they were, uh, in fact, I think Betsy's husband, uh, was, uh, Ed, was involved in that first lawsuit. But uh, uh, it's, just, it's just so many elements that came, you know, historically just that, that, that came together in, in, in the city and, and, and no one uh, ever thought that private, thought that would, that would happen.